Let's talk about ensembles. What are ensembles? They are models which combine multiple machine learning models to create more powerful models. This is kind of an outdated example, but it's still relevant in the context of ensembles. In 2006, Netflix launched a machine learning competition for predicting movie ratings. They declared a price of $1 million who could improve the scores of their current system by 10%. This got people really excited. Many people participated and the winning system was an ensemble model. It's another story that Netflix didn't end up using this system because of code maintenance issues. But since then, ensembles have been popular in industry and in machine learning competitions. You will notice that most of the winning solutions for Kaggle competitions involve some kind of ensembling. Here I'm showing you an example of the first place solution for fraud detection problem. I think this is the same data set we used last week. And the three main models from their solution are CADBoost, LGBM, and XGB. And all these three models are ensemble models. The key idea of ensembles is that groups can often make better decisions than individuals, especially when group members are diverse enough. This idea has been used in many different fields. For example, it's a popular idea in data annotation when we collect labels to create data sets for supervised machine learning. Now, there are a number of ensemble models in machine learning literature. The most successful ones in the recent years on a variety of data sets are tree-based models. And in this lecture, we are going to talk about two such models, random forests and gradient boosted trees. We will also talk about averaging and stacking. Here is the general idea of tree-based models. We have seen decision trees before. Decision trees are interpretable. They can capture non-linear relationships. Right, So the decision boundary of decision trees can be quite complicated. Also, they don't require scaling of the data and theoretically they can work on categorical features. But we have seen that if we just use a single decision tree, it's likely to overfit. So the key idea behind tree-based models is that we create multiple trees and we combine these trees to build stronger models. As I said before, these kinds of models are very popular in industry as well as in machine learning competitions. They tend to perform very well on a variety of data sets. To demonstrate ensembling, I'm going to use this ideal census data set. As usual, if you want to run this notebook, you will have to download the data set and put it under the data directory. Then I'm carrying out all the pre-processing on this data that we already have done before. So you should be pretty familiar with all this. First of all, I'm replacing these question marks by NANs so that missing values are identifiable by our simple imputer. Okay, now I'm defining different kinds of features, numeric features, categorical features, ordinal features, binary features, drop features, and so on. Now we have this education levels as an ordinal feature. So I'm defining the ordering of different categories. And uh, just to make sure, I'm checking whether I considered all education levels when I uh, ordered them. So that passed. And here is our column transformer. This is our preprocessor. We have numeric transformer, which just has standard scalar. Then we have ordinal transformer, uh, which has this uh, ordinal encoder, then categorical transformer with simple imputer and one hot encoder, and binary transformer with simple imputer and one hot encoder. We are also dropping some features. So this is our preprocessor. Now I'm creating X train Y train and X test Y test. First of all, let's check whether we have class imbalance. These are the value counts of our target values. What do we see here? We see that this less than or equal to 50K class is much more frequent than greater than 50K class. 
So we do have class imbalance. But without any context, I don't really know which class should be considered more important. So I'm just going to consider accuracy as our scoring metric. Later, you can experiment with different scoring metrics here. Okay, now we are going to uh, carry out many experiments. So I'm creating this results dictionary to store different results. Okay, we have our data, we have our evaluation metric. And what do we want to do? Our goal is to examine how well these ensembling models perform on this data set. So let's start with baselines. Our first baseline is dummy classifier baseline. Again, I'm using this mean STD cross file scores function. And the definition of this function is under the code folder in this utils.py file. Okay. Our second baseline is a decision tree model. I'm creating a pipeline with preprocessor and decision tree classifier. And here are the results of our decision tree model and dummy classifier. What do we see here? Decision tree is performing much better than the dummy classifier, but we see that it is clearly overfitting. The training score for the decision tree is one and validation score is 0.81. Okay, we have our baselines now. So later when we try tree-based ensembles, we have some reference points. 